Now some of you guys know T-Rex Arms started as a holster company back in 2013. I had a thousand bucks, an iPhone, a couple of blue guns, some sticks, and some Kydex. I didn't even have all the Kydex colors. And started the company off of Instagram primarily and made holsters custom made to various firearms. I didn't have a lot of options at first, but even before T-Rex Arms was a thing, I was selling some stuff on eBay. And then uh, I was selling mag carriers specifically, but my fire chief, I was a volunteer firefighter at the time, found out I was making some holsters and he said, hey, can you make me a Glock 17 holster? And I went, eh, I don't really wanna make gun holsters. I was having fun making attachments and mag carriers and stuff, but I went, you know what? I'll give it a shot. And uh, this is what I made. It is the first holster, uh, arguably, from T-Rex Arms, and it is uh, very primitive as far as manufacturing. Uh, there were some materials online that I was watching over and over, how to make holsters, and so I understood the overall principles of heating up the Kydex, getting it to 340-ish, 330 degrees, taking foam, squishing it together around your item, such as a magazine or a shotgun shell, something like that. I made some shot shell holders early on, which were weird, but I uh, used a real Glock 17, and I wanted to be careful because I didn't want to deform the gun, uh, which you can actually do, and uh, ended up building this. Um, I used a hacksaw to chop between... Uh, the front and the back, so that's why it's uneven. Uh, literally just had it just tack sawing away. And then uh, I had my little grommets, and I had to make the belt loops here on the back because uh, I was too poor to go and buy uh, belt loops that existed on the market. There weren't very many options, and they were pretty expensive. So this is made out of 125 Kydex, uh, so I did go up to something thicker because I figured that would be a good idea, and I used little pieces of wood uh, to space out the belt and I folded it all around and I pushed other pieces of wood against it to kind of make it all square. And the cool thing with this holster, I, I gave it to him, uh, sold it to him. I can't remember what I sold it to him for. And about a month later, he came home. There was an intruder in his house. and ended up drawing on the guy, calling the cops. They showed up and dealt with it. And he sent me a nice letter about that. And I thought that was pretty cool that a product that I had made was used so soon after making it in a real life situation. Uh, thankfully, nobody got shot, and that's nice. Um, then it was a couple years later, as the company grew and was taking off, I went, you know what? I'd like to get that first holster, because it's just, it'd be cool to have. So I shot him an email, said, hey, could I get that holster back? I'll upgrade you with a new one. Would you be down for doing that? And he said, absolutely. Send it back. We made him a new one, and that was pretty cool. So uh, this was the first holster ever. It did improve uh, pretty quickly. Um, we were on a, I was trying to improve the product as much as I could. A lot of it was tooling. So right after this one, I made this, which as you can see is quite a bit smaller. The wings are bent a little bit more. Um, this is actually made for a Glock 26. I was trying to cram a Glock 19 in here earlier and then realized, oh, that's right. It was 2013. Uh, Glock 26s were a thing back then. So that's what this is. Um, I think I got this back from a customer. They sent it back on the back. It says purchased in 2013. And uh, in flat, dark earth, which was all the rage back then. And you'll see, no optic cuts. Um, optics weren't really a thing back then. Uh, people weren't really ordering for optics. And uh, so that's fun. And then shortly after that, I think this was about two years later, uh, we updated the design. We had much better definition. We had more consistent cut lines. It was at that point I, I wanted nice straight lines as far as uh, angles for the holster. We had some decent belt loops. Uh, these were the ones that Index Fastener, uh, Fastener created, which was really nice. And we were even experimenting with stamping the holsters on the back. Uh, the problem with this is it wears away pretty quickly uh, from sweat and just wearing it. So we stopped doing that after about a year, I want to say. And we were also experimenting with variable retention. So we had a little wooden block that I would tape to the blue gun to give it some space. We would shove rubber washers inside, and then you could kind of uh, change up the retention. And this holster is quite tight, um, and as you'll see, this is actually really fun, uh, the gun bounces around in the holster. And the reason for this is I was using blue guns. Blue guns, I didn't realize until later, um, and the rest of the team, uh, aren't actually like good spec when it comes to making holsters for real handguns, uh, especially after you've molded off of blue guns a lot and you've heated them up. Because um, I would notice this when I would fit test and put holsters together. Some turned out great, some didn't. And we were built, we were testing them off of blue guns, which weren't the same as real guns, and we ran into fitment issues. And so that's what this is right here, is a fitment issue due to improper molding and improper fit test after. 
So, uh, more recently, or a few years ago, we decided to go buy real guns, and so all of our holsters are now fit test with real firearms. Our molds are all custom made in-house. Uh, we have CAD files provided by other companies to ensure a better fit, and we just have processes now that I never dreamed we would have back when I was making stuff like this. So, uh, that's super cool, but I wanna boast slash brag on everyone else back there, because I'm not involved in the holster world anymore, besides like some testing here and there. Um, this is what is currently being made. So if this is the first ever made with primitive tool, tooling, uh, wooden blocks, some foam, uh, a blue gun, or this was a real bullet off of a real firearm. This over here is our iron side holster, which is our new uh, pancake holster outside the waistband holster. It's not actually a pancake design like this one. Um, and this was made off of our own custom molds that the dev team creates, which is awesome. Um, they 3D scan guns and they create custom molds so everything is uh, proper. The form, as you will see, I'll take the gun out, but we're able to get some crazy definition in here in the holster, and that's due to our compression forming. Um, I mean, I was dealing with foam back then and some clamps, um, or I stood on this one. I might have actually stood on this one to form it. Uh, so you'll see that the definition is so much better now than it used to be. Um, the guys are doing such a good job back there, and the retention and the form is just so much better. There is no slop in the pistol at all as I am pulling on it. Um, it is just a very smooth draw um, with the X300. There is just nothing going on with it. Um, it. Our holsters are all optic cut now since optics are the future, and that is very important. Mag releases are exposed nicely, as you will see, and there is no kydex in the way of a draw, which... On the first holster I made, I didn't really know that, so you'll see all the kydex in here in the front, and it just rubs on your hand. But I didn't do enough reps to understand that. I did know to ex keep the mag release uh, exposed, so you don't like bump the mag or something and then it sort of pops out. So anyway, so it's pretty fascinating, uh, and, it's, and it's pretty cool to see in 10 years what went from this that was made um, in a small garage to what is now being um, I don't want to say mass produced, but we do create a lot of these. Uh, what is being created at a very high volume, uh, still custom for you guys, if you want to order different colors, different types of guns, left hand, all that good stuff. Uh, you could get stuff like this made in just a few days. Um, and it's just so much, so much better quality. It's just a better product. Uh, there's just a lot more going on with it. Uh, with the iron side, probably the coolest thing we're able to build into the mold is actually canting the gun into your body with the mold. So we're not using belt clips to do that. It's actually uh, built into uh, the mold itself. You'll see it right here as it shallows out. And that's just something that there's no way we could have done that early on. Uh, there's no way I could have done that with some foam and some sticks. Uh, that had to be done in the computer and with the cool machinery that we have. So, uh, but with all that said, I wanna put this holster on. I haven't put this thing on in a long time and I wanna see what it draws like. It's ghastly. I'm sure it's gonna be ghastly. But we're gonna see, we're gonna see what this looks like. All right, that's pretty good. Now, remarkably enough, this holster is not like, the wings are not super bent, um, you know, as much as say this one, but it actually is pretty comfortable. And I'm a skinny guy. Uh, the guy I made it for was a little bigger, a bit bigger. But that's actually not too bad, so. Oh yeah, I could, I could shoot with this. Um, it would get annoying, uh, the kydex right there. I'm definitely feeling it when I go to draw. Um, but it definitely works, and there's enough retention here I could run around and do stuff. So that's what our first holster looks like. So, that's pretty nifty. So with all that said, guys, uh, this is just a fun example of what can happen, you know, if you work hard early on with the tools that you have, uh, even if you don't have very much, even if you don't have Haas machines, like I didn't have Haas machines starting out, uh, we have something like five or six of them now in the back. Uh, but if you work hard, you work diligently, uh, you put some perseverance into it because the first year of starting a business is always the hardest. Uh, you can take a project from something like this and get it to this. But the, mo the second most important concept out off of that is make sure you have the right people. Because uh, obviously the people in the back who are creating this, uh, if I hadn't had the right people, this would have never happened. I would probably still be in a little shop making uh, 
maybe not this. I would have probably, I, I would have gotten to this. This is about what I got to. Um, but I'd be stuck at this. This is what you guys would have access to buying from T-Rex Arms. Um, if it had just been, you know, me and maybe a couple people. Uh, but we have this now due to the awesome people that we have here at the company. Uh, the really smart people in the back, they're able to create some really phenomenal stuff that we can offer you guys. So uh, with all that said, I hope this was interesting. Some of you guys who've been following our company for a long time to kind of see the progression from the first to shortly after to a few years later, two years or so to what we have right now as far as an outside the waistband holster. And we're still trying to innovate as much as we can. Uh, we're not stopping here. We may have some weird stuff after this that's even cooler. So I'm excited for that. I'm looking forward to it. And it's been a really awesome 10 years.